sample pack and the online store is almost here and I've been working really, really, really hard on it. So the Shopify store, almost done. In addition to that, I've been doing a lot of editing around the podcast, which I'm starting and creating lots of different snippets. And it's just been a lot of learning. And I'm coming up to the store being live. So I thought whilst I'm coming to the end of finishing it and almost releasing it, I'll talk about some of the things that I'm learning so far around all of the things to think about when preparing a digital product to sell to people. And these are some of my takes at the moment. But yeah, it's sort of what I'm working through currently. So my first thing I'm thinking of is user friendliness. And when I'm thinking of user friendliness, I'm thinking of two two things. Firstly, the actual product itself. So I did a free version that I've been messaging to people and, and ex- in exchange gathering their email address so they can join my mailing list. And that's been going really well. But of the labeling of the actual files within there, that time round, I kind of named them sort of creative names. I almost did treat them as if they were songs, really. So some abstractly kind of indicated what they meant. But if you looked at them at face value, they were maybe just names. But what I'm going to change this time round is use more descriptive names because I'm thinking more about the producer and them using it as a tool. And as opposed to, let me think of, one of the baselines of my free one was called, I think it was called Dragonfly, which doesn't mean anything, when really it was a short melodic R&B loop. So naming it that way when a producer's working on the tune and it describes the style of it, they'll know whether it's suitable for the tune that they're working on in that moment. And it just makes it more fit for purpose. So I'm definitely going to be naming my files more in that format. And then thinking again of the format, just to make it user friendly, is um, is that on the store itself, compared to the landing page for the free version, it was just a download link, download it for free. Of course, this time it's not free. There's going to be money involved, which that's that's a whole other different dynamic. But what I didn't do was enable people to hear what it was like Um, I appreciate it's a big big ask to ask somebody to pay 20 odd pounds for something that they don't even know what it sounds like I experienced this when I was buying sample packs and the ones which made me skip were the ones where if I can't even hear a preview I'm not even considering it so for my own product I need to be thinking the same way so with that I've learned how to how how to um, in, take an embed code from a SoundCloud file and put that and put that in the actual website so people can actually hear the baselines in use so they can make a judgment call about whether it's for them or not. So I've learned how to embed SoundCloud links, which is very very new for me um, and very very useful. Pretty straightforward, but it's something that I didn't know before. So that's definitely going to help in that way. And again, I've been thinking about how to manage the customer service side in that I've been busy on the creative side but now it's thinking around now I'm a store and when people buy products from the store best case scenario is they just buy it they use it and that's it but I need to keep a track of what's happening and in in case there are queries I need to know what's going on and that back-end customer service needs to be flawless so I've been thinking about how I'm going to manage that in the best way So with linking with the Shopify store, there's a couple of um, apps I checked out which which automate the delivery of digital products. So it's not a manual process. One being a separate one called Sendow, which can work in its own right. It's got a buy button, but integrates really well with Shopify. And then there's an app which is free within Shopify called Digital Download. So digital download is free and for send out, I'm currently using the free trial at the moment, squeeze what I can out of it, but then, but, then, but it comes paid. And after trying out two, doing lots of test orders through the site, I'm going to go through send out because I like the fact that there's unique download links for each customer. And I can, I like the fact of, yes, there is a, a customer journey trail on the actual Shopify website itself, but I'm going to be thinking I'm going to be out and about doing various things and to constantly log in, I may not need it. 
and I like the fact that I get a copy of the email through Sendow that the customer is sent and that will just help me keep on top of things. So that's why I'm going to be going with Sendow and just to help that just because it's more email friendly for me as opposed to logging in app friendly. I'm going to set up a separate email address which all of my orders go through just so I can track it and that just it's a really simple mundane admin task but it's just trying to organize myself and have an awareness of I like to quickly check an email which is on my phone instantly as opposed to logging into something that's how I like to work and that's the decision that I'm going to make to make sure that I can keep keep a track on things in a really really good clear way and so overall it's overly more beneficial so as the only drawback is when i was doing a few test orders in that so send out has all of that back end functionality i really like but on the actual order screen when you've paid and it says your product is available the download button is really really discreet just under thank you which is a slight drawback it's not too obvious compared to the digital download app it comes up in a bright color whatever theme you've gone with with your website there might be a way of changing that because i've only been on shopify for a day <laughs> so i'm still learning all of the functions so but from a from a customer point of view it's just less obvious and i suppose that's one immediate drawback of send out of what i found but other than that from a customer experience and me managing it in the back end it's going to be much much better and the other part I've been preparing, I've mentioned it a few times, is Shopify in that I've never designed a, a website or an online store before and it's just perfect off the shelf. Even though it is off the shelf and I consider myself quite tech savvy, there's certain things I found quite difficult. Not a, No slander on the site itself, it's just a lot for me to learn quite soon. So I've gone for the simplest template, the one called Dawn. You know, I haven't spent any pennies on it, one of the free ones. That's the one that I'm going with, just to keep it really clear and simple. But I put a deadline on myself because I want to get this out as soon as possible and get the ball rolling. So I've given myself quite a tight time frame to create this store. And one thing with that is I have had the chance to create lots of the different functions and with that, as I'm sort of like looking at my store now, uh, there's elements of it. I'm probably a little bit self-conscious of this stage, um, if I'm honest with you in that. It's not bells and whistles. It's very, very plain. I haven't got many images, any much high quality images that I would feel comfortable with using. So I basically have my sample pack artwork, which someone did for me on Fiverr, which I think is fantastic. So I've got the artwork and I've got my logo and apart from that I've got no real images to use and I'm thinking does it look plain does it look boring does it look un un unenticing does it would it would it turn you off so I'm half thinking about that and then but then I'm also thinking about does it convey any personality of my company about what I want to convey and what the conclusion that I'm coming to to justify in my head is that the personality of what I'm doing will come across in the social media platforms and that's how people are going to come across the store in the first place. No one's going to Google an unknown company, shake work, sample pack and come across me. It's just not going to happen. I'm a, I'm a nobody that's just starting a business. That just won't happen. So um, yeah, people discover me through social media and when they come to the site, my thinking at the moment is that they're not going to make a really cutthroat decision on, okay, this site doesn't look all bells and whistles, I'm going to click off. My thinking is they'll get a feeling about what the company is about and what the quality is about through my social media outlet. And by the time they come to the store, they've made a decision really that, that strong decision that they're considering buy, buying it and they're kind of in the ballpark. Um, so that's my justification on it. It's um, said the website's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's just pretty much down the middle. It's just pretty straight about what it can achieve. So that's so that's what I'm thinking of with that. And it's um, yeah, it's really really interesting because I suppose another part of all of this or preparing it that's more in the technical aspects, but some of the other aspects is. A little bit of doubt creeping in of um, oh do I need to delay it because do I actually need to spend more time 
designing the actual online store, regardless of what I said, is it a make or break? So that's made me think, do I need to push it back? And with the artwork, with the actual sample pack itself, I've taken the same format what, which I used for the free one and updated it for this one. And I thought, should I really be using the same format? Should I come up with something new, something fresh? And I think that's little insecurities and little nervousness as I'm getting close to actually sharing this with people and saying, oh, I've got a product to sell, spend your money because it's worth it. And then I've just needed to check myself in that. Firstly, acknowledge that there's a little bit of doubt as I'm creeping towards actually releasing this. And the, how I'm rationalizing with myself is I need to give ideas a good period, good period of time to judge whether they're good or not. If I keep chopping or changing, then I can't see what idea is valuable and what idea isn't. And I'm chopping and changing based on my opinion as opposed to the opinions of people which matters, which are the people which will hopefully talk about what I'm doing and ultimately buy it. And all of that's been creeping in, which has been quite interesting to kind of observe myself talk and certain things I've been thinking. And that's where I'm up to so far of all the things to think about when selling a digital digital product, in my case, a sample pack. So I hope that that's, that's been interesting to get an insight into. And then the next time I'll be talking about what I'm doing, the store will have been online for a period of time. And of course, I'll be frantically looking at the numbers and cheering, hopefully every time somebody logs on and somebody sort of like buys it. So I'll be very much at that stage. So uh, I'll see what that brings. And yeah, it'll be interesting. And um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to actually being a real physical thing and not just an idea, my, an idea in my head that I'm fantasizing about. So thanks for indulging me again. And I'll be back with some more uh, insights about what I'm up to and trying to make sense of what I'm doing. All right, take care.